Hey Threadbanger, I am relatively new to sewing. What's the difference between a serger and a regular sewing machine? Sharita. Hey, what's up? No, nothing, I'm just on Threadbangers. Nice serger. How about a tutorial on how to thread one of these bad boys? We lost the manual. Help. Yeah, I'll come over as soon as I finish posting this comment. Alright, bye. Listen up, troops! This week's mission is to identify the surgeon's purpose, how to thread the darn thing, and how to successfully use it in DIY combat. Now move! 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 This is a serger, also known as an overlock machine. An overlock stitch is a stitch that sews over the edge of one or two pieces of cloth. And a serger does this by cutting the edge of the fabric as it sews to create professionally finished seams and hems. Or you can opt not to use the cutter, which would create a rolled hem. An overlock machine, or serger, is different than a lock stitch machine because it uses loopers fed by multiple thread cones rather than a bobbin. The thread passes through a color-coded telescoping thread guide. On my machine, green is for the lower looper, purple is the upper looper, blue is the right needle, and peach is for the left needle. And each thread has its own tension control knob. Other functions include the stitch length control and the differential feed, which allows you to control how many stitches per inch are made. You can use a serger to construct a complete garment, but they're generally used for finishing hems and seams usually on the inside of a garment, like a t-shirt. Surging with four threads is generally used for seaming high stress areas which create extra strength while retaining flexibility. But there are also three, two, and one thread options. All right, time to thread it up. The most important thing is that you always start threading from the right and work your way to the left. In my case, that means starting with the green. Grab the thread that's directly underneath the green guide, pull it through the guide, then loop-de-loop -loop the corresponding holes. Down through the tension control, following all the little green markings, through the lower looper, and to the back. Now it's purple's turn. Through the thread guides and down, following all the purple dots, then through the upper looper and back. Blue, through and down, following the blue dots, through the right needle, and to the back. And it's peach time. Through the guides, down, following the peach dots, through the left needle, and to the back. Now close her up and get to surging. Sweet podcast! Oh. And I'm out. Peace. In lieu of Independence Day, we give you Threadbanger's favorite top 10 independent designers. In no particular order, we have Gibbous Fashion out of San Francisco that collects vintage fabrics, old Victorian clothing and trinkets, and recycles them into some awesome new garments. Also, a West Coaster and just coming off his latest tour is everyone's favorite rock star designer, Andrew Hansen of AH Fashion. Out of Ohio, we have Kelly from Anti Label, who creates awesome one of a kind vintage inspired clothing. Anastasia Louise of Bad Uncle Sister, which you may have seen a couple months back right here on Threadbanger, makes the list with her eccentric costume art and outrageous creations. A little closer to home here in Brooklyn comes 80s inspired designer Rufio Hart's Little Snotty, who redesigns colorful 80s clothing into rad new futuristic fashion. There's the lovely Cassie Kay from New York's own New York Couture, who takes DIY to a whole nother level with her out-of-the-box fashion sense. The super savvy queens of Recon and our favorite fashion duo, the Compi Girls, definitely make it to our top 10. Maya Hubble of the clothing line Recyclone never ceases to amaze us with her incredible art you can wear, plus a great example of some amazing serger fashion. Rebecca Turbo and her handcrafted safe clothing line continues to push the fashion envelope. And last but not least, there's from Somewhere Clothing out in the UK that recycle pre-consumer textile waste in the trendy new duds. And always remember, if you can't make it yourself, make sure you buy it from somebody that does. 
Hey Threadheads, this is Molly, aka Shoe Molly, and um, I just made these kind of like neat little cuff things out of my dad's old button down. Just wanted to show you guys. Um, I love your site, <laughs> and yeah, thank you so much. Bye! And now, on to the future independent designers. Over on the forums, member Kitten posted this tutorial on how to make a hoodlet. Jule shared this rad idea of studying your shoelaces. Nadio Possum found something to do with all those old ties and revamped a couple old pair of jeans. Addie Marie showed off her new serger-inspired outfit, and not even a needle through the finger could discourage four member brand new from completing these amazing pair of leggings. Speaking of independence, it doesn't get any more independent than not having to rely on buying gas. Before, remember, It's Just Joelle posted some sweet pics of a bus her and her friends bought that they refurbished to run on recycled vegetable oil. Don't believe it? Head on over to greasecar.com and find out how you could do it to your car. Well, that's it for this week. And remember, it doesn't matter where you live or what day of the year it is, you can always celebrate your DIY independence. Know of any independent artists you think we should check out? Hit us up in the comments below. Till next week, see ya!